hello, my name is Douglas Poole. Uh, we have Double P Ranch here in Mansfield, Washington. Uh, our ranch consists of a dry land, uh, small grains operation, growing wheat, uh, canola, uh, sunflowers, oats, uh, triticale, and pretty much anything else that we think we can grow that either can feed a cow or haul somewhere and somebody will buy. Uh, we've uh, incorporated through our work with uh, cover crops, we've incorporated a cattle partnership that now runs uh, approximately 600 head of um, cow-calf um, pairs and hope to expand that in, in the near future. We had been por uh, part of the uh, first cover crop trial that was just cropland. And through that, I think it was this, this particular program was spawned um, just because we had learned with those original cover crop trials that one, we were, we were beginning to see the benefits of soil health, um, but we knew that really to make uh, cover crops work in North Douglas County in our limited rainfall, it was gonna require some sort of uh, cattle integration um, everything has told us that that's one of the key components of soil health is, is the cattle operation. And so we had the good fortune of working with uh, Leslie Michael and then a couple of other producers. And we kind of got together and kind of formed what we thought would be a, a good research uh, program uh, with regard to how the cattle would be integrated and how that would affect soil health. My life depends on the, the health of my soil. Um, when I came back in 2011, uh, the, the, everything had been tilled for probably 60, 70, 80 years. Um, anhydrous ammonia had been used as the primary fertilizing um, input. Uh, that had probably went on for 40 or 50 years, and um, it was easy to, to kind of see, especially in hindsight, but it was easy to, to see even at that time that that system had plateaued and that there was a lot of wind erosion, a lot of uh, water erosion, when and if we ever did get water, it, it, it was coming, intends to come now in, in inch increments as opposed to a, a soft rain, and so we had a lot of erosion. Um, so really, it, I started with no-till, and from no-till, I, I, you, you fell off the abyss or whatever, whatever term or analogy you want to use, but uh, soil health became the all-encompassing term that um, really no-till was in hindsight, again, is probably one of the smaller portions of soil health and what we're trying to do. Obviously, the cover crops, again, back to the, the soil health principles, try to keep it covered, uh, try to keep a diverse uh, root growing as long as we can. And we had struggled with our, our original cover crop trials, thinking that we needed to terminate at 30 to 45 days to maintain our moisture for our, our mon monoculture uh, cash crop. And again, through our research and just kind of just some thinking for a second that if we could keep that living root going, what could we do or what, what could the livestock bring us? And obviously that opened up all kinds of doors around uh, another revenue stream. Uh, but still more importantly is, is the effect that the, the livestock were supposed to have on, uh, on the soil uh, once they were integrated to the cover crops. Soil health is soil health. It doesn't matter if we're here or Africa or wherever else. Um, it, <clears throat> nature works everywhere um, if man would just get out of its way. And so my, really my trepidations were, again, not a trepidation. It was more just how's it going to work here? How are we going to reintroduce, reintroduce nature in our little neck of the woods, you know, with our rainfall and our soils and, and everything else. So. obviously just trying to make it fit in our rainfall. Um, you know, you, you look around the world and it's fascinating, goofy North Douglas County and in its rainfall patterns and where we lay just is fairly unique. You wouldn't think it was, it is, um, but it, it's unique. And so it's difficult to find anybody that's doing anything like we're doing uh, in this rainfall, in these soils. Um, but that, it's nothing that's, it's just a small barrier. It, it, Again, nature works everywhere. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to figure out how to reintroduce it here and get out of nature's way. Now we've introduced the cash crop, 
because again, we, we have a system where I, I've got a bank loan, I've got landlords, I've, I've got to produce with that land that I've been given. And so what we've done is we've put the cash crop, uh, whether it be wheat or triticale, in with the cover crop, and we're seeding that cover crop probably three to three and a half months earlier than we would normally seed. And so we've obviously expanded the amount of time that a growing root is in the ground and we have that green cover and you know we're using got photosynthesis in high gear during that time in a time where we would normally be fallow um, and so we're we're very very new to that um, still trying to figure out where the yields are going to come in the the cows obviously need to be integrated just per those principles but they've they've generated a revenue stream that may make up or actually make the cover crop system that we're implementing uh, more profitable than my monoculture crop. Um, so, it, it, again, once it, it's endless. The cover crops really what we can do are, are endless. Um, I foresee this particular ranch here, my goal is, is to get away, completely away from monoculture crops altogether and somehow have something growing at all times and, and four legs standing in the middle of it. So. Obviously, the first thing is, is do your research. Um, I think I think that's where a lot of people st stumble a little bit in that they just they look at the neighbor and think, oh, I can just throw some seeds in the ground. Um, and so I think it's important to first have some goals, um, kind of have an idea of what you're trying to do. Um, and for example, in our case, I I believe it needs to be more of a cattle ranch than a than a small grains ranch. And so that's that's our goal. Our goal is to have something growing at all times. But and then secondly, just start small. Um, that's kind of a little contrary to how I do it. I, <clears throat> if I'm going to do 50 acres, I might as well do 500 and, and see what happens. But I think that's the key for anybody. Just just try it and and uh, and keep it small, keep it manageable, but obviously set those goals.